There's been a lot of great videos about Hong Kong and its 1997 handover from the United Kingdom where it had been a colony for 150 years to China. But Hong Kong was not the only European colony handed back to China at the end of the 20th century. Everyone seems to forget about Macau. In this video we're going to talk about the Portuguese colonization and handover of Macau to the Chinese in December 1999. The reality of the Macau handover though is that the Portuguese had long ceded the city to China having lost effective control and their leverage decades before. So unlike with the dramatic tensions of the Sino-British talks and the subsequent 1997 handover, the Sino-Portuguese negotiations were almost an afterthought, with one interesting twist. So let's first start with uh, Portugal and Macau from 1500 to 1900. Uh, and this is what this video will cover. It's going to be a series of three. And um, I think they're going to be all released at once. So if you were interested in watching the other two, uh, they'll come right after this one. Sino-British history has been, to say the least, tense. Up until the Japanese came onto the scene, the Chinese saw the British as the face of a colonialism and the epitome of 100 years of humiliation that encompasses the opium wars and the unequal treaties that resulted in the cessation of Hong Kong and other foreign concessions. This shameful history, as well as Hong Kong's size and wealth, added a great deal of tension to the negotiations between the two countries regarding the colony's return to China. Portugal's history in China, however, is much different, and it stretches over a much longer period of time. No major war was fought to control and expand Macau. Rather, Portugal came to occupy Macau through a long process of incremental steps. The Portuguese first came to the Pearl River estuary in 1513. 130 years before the Qing dynasty even existed. China at the time was ruled by the Ming dynasty. Having arrived and start taking up shop, uh, the Portuguese began trading with the mainlanders. Macau was established as a simple trading post in 1535, a small foreign settlement on the southern fringe of the Chinese mainland. To justify their presence, the Portuguese signed a lease agreement with the local Chinese authorities in 1573. The annual rent, well, we can probably call it more of a bribe than rent, was about 500 silver tails with custom duties of 20,000 tails more. No gunboats, no armies, just a nice rental agreement along with some fat bribes. During this period, the Chinese, represented by the Ming and then Qing dynasties, not only retained sovereignty over Macau, but also had effective jurisdiction. For example, early Qing officials established a maritime customs station in 1688 in Macau, proving that they were the one calling the shots. Portuguese settlers were not legal permanent residents, but were informally tolerated because of their trade associations. With that being said, the Portuguese slowly pushed the limits of their administration over Macau over the years. In 1586, the crown official bestowed city status over the settlement, establishing a municipal council and installing a Catholic bishop there. Then in 1605, they built a wall around Macau, ostensibly to defend the city from attacks from people like the Dutch, but it also had the side effect of drawing city borders. The Chinese did not give permission to do this, but did nothing about it. Eighteen years later, Lisbon appointed the first full-time governor of Macau. Back home, the Portuguese government felt increasing impatience about Macau's ambiguity. They wanted permanent recognition of the colony status. In the, eight, in the, in the 1800s, they would have that chance. So let's talk about the century of humiliation. In the 19th century, China entered its century of humiliation, as it is called and misery loves company. After the United Kingdom defeated China in the First Opium War and took over Hong Kong Island, the Portuguese, under Governor João Ferreira de Amaral, stopped paying rent and taxes to the Qing. They began simultaneously taxing the local Macanese residents. They also demolished the Qing's customs office in their area, the one built in 1688, and later took over Little Taipa Island to the south of Macau. In 1862, they attempted to negotiate another e unequal treaty with China, the Treaty of Tianjin, which would get Macau formally recognized as a Portuguese colony, like with Hong Kong. But Beijing saw through the scheme and refused to ratify it, and the treaty expired two years later. The situation remained in flux for the next 20 plus years. Finally, in 1887, the Sino-Portuguese Treaty of Friendship and Trade would confirm Macau's legal status as a place under Portuguese perpetual occupation. It acknowledged that Portugal would continue to administer Macau, but in the interpretation of the Chinese did not cede China's sovereignty over Macau. Coming in the aftermath of the unequal treaties though, it was unpopular with the Chinese people. 
United the Portuguese Revolution in 1910, nor the Chinese 11 Xinhai Revolution changed Macau's status. So overall, the history of the Portuguese in Macau was marked with small expansions and boundary pushing over the centuries. This low-profile approach had the benefit of reducing newspaper headlines, but at the same time left things very much unsettled. The Chinese never formally ceded sovereignty over Macau over the centuries, but acknowledged the reality of having the Portuguese there doing their stuff. This would leave a great deal of ambiguity that both Portugal and China would tussle over as they both entered the impactful 20th century. It will continue that in part two. Thanks.